What's up guys? It's your boy Sal and today I'm gonna show you how to do a valve adjustment on a Ducati Testa Evolucione engine otherwise the 848, 1098 and 1198 engine series. So a few tools you'll need for this job. You'll need a, a screwdriver. I've got two here. A magnet tool if you have one, it's convenient to have. A socket wrench with a 12 millimeter socket. Feeler gauges that go from 0 millimeters up to 0 0.25 millimeters and beyond. You want them as small increments as possible. I got this from Harbor Freight. And a notebook for recording all the measurements you'll be taking. So first things first, you want to create a table for all the measurements you will be taking. And you also want to write down the Ducati specs for the clearances. Now Ducati is kind of strange. They have like the specs that it should be within and then there's also the uh, measuring specs. So the actual specs like 0 0.13 to 0 0.18 for the openers on both the intake exhaust is what they uh, ideally should be between. But if you, if you measure it to be um, between 0 0.10 to 0 0.25 that is acceptable and you do not need to change the um, the shim. So it's kind of strange in that regard, um, but it is nice because it gives you a lot of leeway for measurement. If a valve d uh, clearance does fall outside of these measurement ranges, then you will adjust it to be within the correct uh, specification. And you can find this online in whatever user manual. So moving on from that, what you're going to do is you're going to set your Cylinder head to the camshaft to top dead center. This is for the vertical cylinder head. And top dead center is when the uh, opening uh, camshaft uh, rocker lobe is uh, pointed up, as you can see on both the intake and exhaust camshafts. So that's been set, and now we're ready to take measurements. So now that we're ready to take the measurement, you kind of want to understand. Uh, how it will feel when you have when you're taking an accurate measurement of the clearance so if you stick your feeler gauge in a notebook and apply some pressure with your hand or you put something on top and you try and slowly remove the feeler gauge uh, that sort of feeling will be telling of an accurate measurement so as you can tell i've already taken my measurements but i'll show you how and where you make you make your measurements so this is uh 0 0.10 millimeters we're going to measure the opener shim clearance so you can see you can measure it directly from here slides in perfectly fine that's for the vertical intake right as you can see i noted that 0 0.10 millimeters it fits right in but for the vertical intake left it won't even go in you can see it's just it doesn't want to go in there and i already went to the smallest feeler gauge I had and it would not go in, which is 0 0.04 millimeters. So I noted it as uh, 0 millimeters of clearance. For the closer shim, you are measuring right there. The gap between the closer lobe and the closing rocker. So right here I have a 0 0.25 millimeter shim for the horizontal intake right. I did note that it slides right in and you can see that it does not because I'm, I'm an idiot. For the closing rocker, you're measuring the gap between the closing lobe on the camshaft and the closing rocker as you can see right there. So what I have right here, as I've noted on the horizontal intake right, I'm seeing 0 0.15 millimeters of clearance, whereas on the intake left I'm seeing zero. So. What I have right here is a 0 0.15 millimeter feeler gauge. You can see, pardon my shaky hands, this guy slides right in on the horizontal intake right, as I found. But on the left, it doesn't want any of it. So, and I went to my smallest feeler gauge, which was 0 0.04 0 .04 millimeters and uh, it wouldn't want to go in. Okay, so we found that the the vertical intake left opener shim uh, needs to be changed because that clearance is too small. So if you need to change the shim, you need to remove the camshafts. So these eight bolts will have to come off using a 12, 12 millimeter socket. 
So once those bolts have been undone, you can use a small screwdriver to kind of pop those guys off and just yank them off. Yeah, just yank them off. <laughs> now that those have been removed, the camshafts will not come off. This is the vertical intake cylinder, uh, sorry, a vertical intake camshaft. As you can see, it says V for vertical. A stands for some word in Italian that means intake. So that's your vertical intake. And this is your vertical exhaust cylinder. V for vertical, S for scario, which translates to, I guess, exhaust in Italian. I'm not Italian, but if I were, I guess that would be it. And there you go. The shims are ready to be removed. The opener shim is quite easy to remove. It's right there. So you can usually just pop this off with your hand, as you can see right there. And what you have left are your half rings and your closer shim. Now to remove the closer shim and the half rings, you need to prop the closing rocker a little bit down. That way you can push the closing shim down to reveal the half rings, just like that. And you can either remove the half rings with your finger or a little magnet so that the closing shim can be extracted. And I'm gonna use a magnet real quick because it's kind of a pain in the butt getting these guys off, I must say. Well, you get the idea. And now that the half rings have been removed, your closer shim can just be pulled right out. Whoops. And there you go, your closer shim, your opening shim, and your two half rings. By this point, if you need to remove the valve, you can. You just gotta push down and out your valve comes. Now for measuring both shims, there's a tool that is available. You can purchase it online. I don't have it on hand with me. I'm gonna 3D print one. And I'll try and splice in a video showing how to use the tool to take the measurement of the shims. But sometimes there's actually the uh, number printed on the shim itself. So you can see right there it says 3.110. So that's your shim size, 3.110 <laughs> millimeters. And then um, same thing for your closer shim. Sometimes it is printed on here, as you can see says 3.25 millimeters so obviously you want a tool to confirm those uh those numbers but that's generally how you can find your shim size so next up for the calculation and we found that the opener uh shim clearance is too small um so we found the clearance was 0, 0 millimeters the measured shim was 3.10 millimeters and it, the clearance should be between 0 0.13 to 0 0.18 millimeters. So in this case, our uh, clearance is too small. And unfortunately, I'm in too many situations where things of mine are too small. But anyways, so again, our clearance is 0 millimeters. We need it between 0 0.13 to 0 0.18. And our measured shim is 3.10. So to calculate your new shim, your formula is you take your measured shim, so 3.10, minus the upper end of your spec, so we have 0 0.18, subtracted by your measured clearance, which is 0, and that'll give you one end uh, of the range of your new shim. And then you do, it for, you do that ca calculation again for the lower portion of your spec. So right here we have 3.10 minus the upper end of the spec, subtracted by our measured clearance, and we get 2.92. We do it again for the lower end of the spec, and we have 2.97 millimeters. So your new shim can be between anything between 2.92 and 2.97 millimeters. And since this is zero, I'm going to lean towards the upper end of that spectrum. So I'm going to want to go with a shim that's closer to 2.92 millimeters. Now, on the other hand, if your clearance is too big, let's say we measured uh, 0 0.5 millimeters of clearance and uh, obviously spec is 0 0.18 max so it's kind of the opposite you add so you take your measured shim you add it by your measured clearance subtracted from the spec so what is it 3.10 which is the shim plus 
0 0.5 millimeters of clearance that we measure with the feeler gauge subtracted by your upper end of the spec and your lower end of the spec. So we got 3.42 and 3.47. So you'd get a shim between 3.42 and 3.47 millimeters. Again, small clearance, go to a smaller shim. Too large of a clearance, go to a larger shim. You can get your new shims at obviously any Ducati shop. Some shops actually offer a straight swap. So you can exchange one swap for the one you are looking for. If they don't have one in stock, then obviously you'll have to purchase it. But once you have your new shins, again, reassembly is the opposite of assembly. Uh, I walked you through the steps of taking out the shims. It's the reverse for putting them back in. I will say once you have them reassembled and you have these back on, you need to tighten them down. You turn this camshaft a few rounds to seat the new shims. Turn them a couple times, five, six times, ten times, be as liberal as you want with it. And then you retake the you remeasure the clearances and make sure they're in spec. So that's a general overview as to how to do the valve clearance on the 1098. If you think this has helped you tremendously, please feel free to shoot me a couple bucks via PayPal. And uh, thanks for watching.